Hello, my fellow coder. Welcome back to this next lesson in our Fresh Votes series, where we're building a Java web app from scratch, leveraging Spring Boot and other cool uh, technology. So uh, in this lesson, if you will, we are going to modify things slightly for our products. So this is still inside of the, the topic of workflow and uh, making for a good UI uh, or UX, a user experience. Um, which is workflow plus some UI stuff and making sure that the users are not confused when they're working with the software that we're creating. So in our dashboard here, um, we have this list of products and I was looking at this and, and the current situation that we're, we're working with is when we click on a product, uh, we go to the screen as a kind of like an administrator of this pro uh, product. We're the owner of this product, therefore we can uh, change the name of the product and, and change whether or not this product is published. Okay, cool. Uh, but there's another view, which is the slash P view, and then the name of the product, like product one, which is where we can see the feature requests uh, for this product. So um, we don't have an easy way to go to this screen yet. So I was pondering how we could solve this problem from a UI perspective, and I guess a UX perspective. Um, and I remember I, la I landed on cards. Cards are always something that, um, oh, my Google's going, uh, always something that I leverage um, with my design. So what is a card, you might ask? Uh, let me say get bootstrap. Um, go to get started, go to components, and go to cards. Cards are available as of, I believe, bootstrap 4.0 is where they, they were first introduced. Um, so bootstrap 3 and earlier, you can sort of uh, cobble together uh, what you know amounts to be a card, but uh, it's just a little bit more uh, annoying, if you will. <clears throat> so with Bootstrap 4 and, uh, and on, uh, you can create cards. So what is a card? Well, um, you can have this example of a card, which is where you have, you know, sort of a, a contained unit where you can place um, useful stuff for one particular, you know, entity, if you will. We'll call it entity because our uh, example is a product, which is an entity. Um, and you can look at different examples of cards. Here's another example of a card with a title, a subtitle, some text, and some links. So um, it's pretty, you know, flexible with what you can put. Here's one with an image and just text. Um, and then you can have stuff, they say kitchen sink. Um, they can have a card with an image, a card title, maybe even a subtitle plus the, um, what is this called? The list group or something, was it? Yeah, list groups, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, you can have, these are quite nice where you have the headers and footers in the card, right? So that there's a, a nice looking header for the card. And this actually tends to be one that I like to use, um, you know, with the with a header being maybe like the product name, and then you can put stuff inside of there. Um, anyway, it's totally up to you with respect to how you want to design it. Um, but yeah, so header and footer, do I want to do that? Um, we, we can start there and see what it looks like, right? So I'm going to copy this code. So you see we have a class card. Within the card scope of, of the class card, we have a header. And then we have body. And then you can have, I believe, a card footer, if I'm not mistaken. You can have a card header, a card body, and a card footer. This example just has a header and a body. And then within that body, they just have, you know, plain old simple um, HTML elements, right? HTML tags. So <clears throat> let's leverage this design and let's go to our um, pr uh, dashboard page, right? Because that's where all these um, products are being listed. So do we have, yeah, dashboard.html. And this is our fresh votes dashboard. So inside of the jumbotron, the jumbotron is like the gray background. Um, if we go here, uh, the big gray background is the, the jumbotron. So I guess we can almost replace the jumbotron, what's inside of the jumbotron with these individual cards. So we can actually get rid of the jumbotron. So really everything inside of the scope of uh, the jumbotron is something that we are considering replacing. So let's do that. Let's comment that out. Okay. For those of you who wondered how I just did that, control shift and then the letter C uh, will we'll comment out whatever it is that you have selected. And then uh, let's start to paste in the uh, example uh, card class that I just copied from the bootstrap page. So now, as you can see here, we have the class card, card header, card body, etc. If I save this, come back and refresh, there's what the card will look like. Okay, fair enough. 
Uh, but really each card, what we want to have here is a product essentially. So let's start to replace this stuff. So the first thing we need to remember is there are multiple or potentially multiple products. Just like down here in the code that we commented out, we had a div th if uh, products is not null, um, then somewhere we did a th each through the products, <clears throat> right? So we were iterating through each of the products. Now, why did we do this again? Oh, because we wanted to have the, um, the title of products show up uh, as a list, I see, if, if so long as there wasn't any products. Um, yeah, I guess, nah, I don't really know if that's really that necessary to have the product's title um, if there are no products created yet, as long as we have that button, right? Down here is, as long as you can create a product, I think that's all that people will really need. So what we can do is we can do a TH each over each of these uh, cards, right? So for every product, there should be a card. So because there should be a product for every card, we do a TH each over the cards, right? And we can sort of just copy paste this guy right here. We're iterating through each of the products thusly. Uh, so we're TH eaching through each of the products and we're assigning the variable name of product to each individual product. So if I save this and refresh this, you will see hopefully two cards, right? Two cards that look identical, but there will be two identical cards because there are currently two products in our database. Let's refresh. Now we have two identical cards. So now we need to start to um, change each of the cards to be more, well, obviously to contain the information relevant to the individual products themselves. So instead of saying featured here in the card header, we should really put in the um, value of the product's title. I think that's what it was. What were we showing before? We were show oh, product.name, my apologies. Product.name is the appropriate thing that we want to put. So if we refresh, see, product one, product two. Cool. So then, okay, fair enough. What do we want to have inside of uh, these these cards, right? So the go somewhere button might be the button to edit the product, right? So we could turn this into an edit button, right? And then what should the edit button do? Well, previously we had a link um, that went to this particular endpoint, okay? Which is the products, product ID endpoint, which allowed us to edit that particular product. So how can we mimic, mimic that? Well, we just replace the href here with this one, right? <clears throat> so we do a th href and include the quotes and we replace the existing href thusly uh, to change that button to, um, or the href of that button to point to uh, the appropriate endpoint. So now if we go back and refresh, the edit button, if I click on it, goes to the product number one. And if I go back and click edit, it goes to product number two. Right? So those buttons are now functional, right? So you can see we can make a lot of progress here um, you know, with, with minimal effort, right? That's the whole point of Bootstrap is to, to make things as easy as possible. Now, the second thing we wanna do here is we wanted to make a button to see maybe view feature requests, right? <coughs> Essentially, that's what we want to do. And how do we get to that endpoint? So remember, I, it was slash P slash the name of the product. Now here's where things are gonna get a little wonky. Um, so product name, right? And what is the product name? It is the product dot name. However, it is the encoded version of that product name. It is the URL encoded version. So, hmm. We have, we've tackled this once before on the Java side of things. We know how to do this on the Java side of things. I don't know if there's a way to do a URL encoding with Timeleaf, because that's essentially what we're working with right here. We're working with Timeleaf. So as any programmer would do, let's Google it. Uh, Timeleaf URL encoding. Let's see. Uh, Timeleaf encoding unencode or encode URL on client. At symbol is a server contact with use at symbol. Um, oh, so the at symbol will automatically, oh, interesting. Okay, so that, that's a feature of the at uh, notation 
Um, is it server context path and timely if you use the at symbol? Okay, let's just see. Maybe that'll just work right out of the box. Maybe we don't have to do, don't have to do anything at all. Let's find out. Let's refresh. Those buttons appear. Hover over the button. Okay, product one is as it should be. It looks fine. Product two is where we have that special um, syntax that should appear. Look at that. It is encoded. Now, the space is not encoded, though. So I don't know if I click on this if it'll work. Uh, it did work. Yeah. Okay, I guess it knows to automatically encode the, the space anyway. So, fantastic. I didn't have to do anything and it works. So that's great. So now we can see that we have the edit button to go and edit the product. And then we have the view feature request to actually get to the feature requests for that particular product. Cool. And now what we can do is if we, if we want to put anything else in here, then we can put some other stuff in here, right? Um, but I'm realizing maybe we don't really need that much more information, right? So if we look at the product itself, the, um, the entity, the domain object, uh, does product hold anything else? It has a name. It has the set of features and whether or not it's published. So really the only other thing that we have here is whether or not it is published, right? So that would be nice to see at a glance on our dashboard. So really what I'm getting at here is, is this text in here is not that useful. So really, we don't really need this, this header, so to speak, for these products, right? We could just have the, um, the title part here be the name of the product, and then we can have some buttons for it, um, and, and, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> maybe we can change the type of card that we are using uh, to just have a simple uh, situation like this. Okay. So yeah, so we just say card body. So we don't need to add a card header. Okay. Within here, we can have a card title though. Okay. Inside of the card body, we can have a card title to make it look nice. And then we can have a card subtitle for whatever. Maybe the card subtitle is where we can have the status of the, the product itself, whether or not it's live. Okay. So that's, you know, Hey, why not? Let's, let's, now that we've started with something and we're, we're, we have, um, we have this in our view and we're looking at it and we're saying, okay, we let's change the view a little bit. This is completely normal in, in my, um, field anyway, it's pretty normal to, to, to mess with things as we are going along. So really we can get rid of the header and inside of the card body, the card title here can be the product name. Right, so we can copy the product name and put it into the card title part. Okay, Ooh, make sure we include that last little double quote. Uh, and then we can just get rid of the header altogether. We don't need a header, right? So yeah, the card, the card text here can maybe be the card subtitle, uh, which was over here, right? We can have a subtitle in there, which is just card subtitle. Uh, and, and I see we also have text muted. Maybe that'll be an important class. So let's just copy this. We'll copy the card subtitle because I kind of like the way that looks. Uh, and we can go into here and paste that guy in there. And then instead of the card subtitle being the actual text itself, uh, we can have a th text um, that shows if it's uh, active or not, right? If it's uh, live. So what was the field that we used for that? Published. Published. So let's see. <clears throat> Publish is just going to say true or false, so we need to actually have some text here. Um, so let's do the, so the bar notation here, the straight up and down bar, allows me to do string concatenation easily. So I can actually type text here, and then we can embed uh, a variable type inside of it. So um, let's do, actually, no, let's do this. Let's get rid of the bars, sorry. Let's say published question mark because we're going we can do a ternary operator here which means if it's true it will execute that code and if it's false it'll execute that code so if it's published we can say published and if it's not published if it's false we can say not published right so we can return this text published versus not published okay let's give that a shot and refresh over here there we go product one published product two published uh, if we edit this and say not published and save and go back to the dashboard, now we can see it says not published. Um, fair enough. That's one way to do it. Now, as you can see, it's it's kind of, it still doesn't look that amazing. So this is where, you know, you can, you can go, you can go as crazy uh, with design as you want with this kind of thing. Um, you know, I'm not sure what else we can really include inside of here or how to really change things up. 
to make things look nicer. Uh, we can change the buttons, maybe the color. So instead of them being all primary color, um, which is the blue, maybe we can make this like secondary, right? Secondary, that way those guys will be, although gray isn't the greatest either, maybe info. Info is like a bit of a turquoise or something, right? So at least there's a differentiation between create a product and that. Um, and then we can start adding some padding between them or some margin between them. So, you know, for each card, maybe the um, we want to have some margin top, right? So add some style to each card. So then you get a little bit of separation between them and maybe even margin bottom as well. So we can maybe do instead of margin top and then margin bottom separately, we just combine them into a margin. Uh, and then it's top uh, and left right so we don't really need a left right margin that way we get a top and bottom margin on those guys um yeah i think that's you know it's not hugely pretty but uh it at least allows us to have some sort of workflow uh that we can then you know it's a launching point for us to work from if you will um yeah because i'm not sure what else i mean we can also publish like how many feature requests there are um, that might be where we go in the future um, for our products. As a dashboard, as an owner of a product, I might want to see at a glance on my dashboard how many feature requests are in each of the stages, right? So the feature requests, um, if you go into one of them, you can see it's pending review, right? So we can see how many are pending review, how many are uh, you know, being considered, how many are approved and in development, how, you know what I mean? So, and how many are rejected. So maybe that'll be a, uh, something that we can put into these cards is to show the actual um, feature requests, how many there are and what statuses they are in. So that would be helpful, right? So that's something that we can put in. For now, let's not get bogged down in those details. Really, all I wanted to do was have a workflow to be able to go um, to the edit screen and be able to come back to um, the dashboard screen and to see the feature requests and come back to the dashboard screen. So in terms of the scope of this video and what I wanted to accomplish, there we go, we've done it. We now have you know changed the design a little bit. We have our products listed. Um, and in the next uh, lesson, in the next video, um, I believe we can get into, um, well, maybe, maybe we can add the, that stuff I was just talking about. Maybe we can add the, the statuses, uh, in, in order to see how many feature requests we have already, um, from a dashboard view, we could go down that, um, avenue, or maybe we can start to, um, build out the other views, which is the, the view of the actual user who is not the owner of the product. So this is just someone using our system, taking a look at a product and um, and then being able to, uh, or not being able to create a feature request because they haven't logged in yet, right? So that's, that's one flow too, is when you are a user who is not logged in, you're just like a guest, if you will. You should be able to look at a product and see the feature requests and click on them and, and, and actually see the feature requests themselves and maybe some comments for the features um, and be able to maybe add a comment if, you, if you're logged in. Um, so that, that kind of workflow, right? Because if you look at our database design, I believe we have uh, tables, we have comments, right? We can actually add a comment on a feature. So there you go. That's a good next, uh, you know, um, launching point is being able to leave comments on features. All right, but in order to leave a comment on a feature, uh, a few there are a few things need to be considered. One is, do you own the feature or not? And two is, are you logged in or not? Okay, so these are all things that we can start to take into account, um, and maybe even the status of the feature itself might might impact whether or not you can leave a comment, right? Because if the feature is done, if you've created it, maybe you don't want to have any more comments, right? So anyway, those are all things that we can start to take into account. Um, for our, yeah, feature requests on, on products. So let's do that in the next video, see what we can bite off and chew on, if you will. So if you like this video, if you like this series, please consider subscribing if you're watching on YouTube, give a like, that kind of thing, leave a comment if you uh, have a question or a comment or whatever. Uh, by all means, I encourage that. If you're not watching this via YouTube, hey, maybe you should consider checking out the YouTube channel, right? You could just look for Fresh Votes on YouTube and I'm sure you'll find all this series of videos. So looking forward to seeing you there. As always, take care of yourself. Happy learning and bye for now.